My name is Joe. Welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to take a look at tweaking presets in the OPEX 4 synth from Air Music Technology. I've been making this playlist about OPEX 4 sound design, but I know that some of you don't want to mess with designing patches from scratch. And even if you do want to create your own sounds, sometimes presets are still pretty handy, right? The thing is with presets, though a lot of times you find something close to what you want, it just needs a little bit of tweaking to fit into the mix or to be that perfect sound. With some synth, it's pretty easy and obvious to know how to do that. With OPEX 4, though, it's not always that intuitive. There are hundreds of parameters, and a lot of the time it's not very obvious what impact they're having on the sound. Like, I might be looking at this horn sound, and maybe I come into operator 1 and see that operator 3 is set to a value of 1.498 for its ratio. So maybe I should change that, right? Yeah, that's not what I was hoping would happen. Or maybe I come into the filter tab to adjust the cutoff and realize that it's actually not using any filters, even though it sounds like it. So my goal today is to show you what things you can tweak pretty quickly to make some big impacts to the sound without dramatically changing its character. With a little luck, changing these things will get you where you want to be. And if they don't, at least you'll know it might be time to try another patch unless you want to commit some serious time to it. So let's dig in. The first place I like to start are with these eight macro parameters. Now the good news is, the sound designers at Air Music Tech have done a really nice job of assigning these to meaningful things for each patch. The bad news is, they're only numbered 1 through 8. They don't really have any names or labels that describe what you're modifying, so you're a little bit just blindly tweaking here. But I'm going to show you how to figure out exactly what these controls are affecting, and the good news is they're actually pretty consistent from patch to patch, at least where they can be. So let's take a look at them for this horn patch. I'm going to come over here to the Modulation Matrix tab, and I'm going to start with page number 6. I'm looking at the Source column here, and I don't see them here, so let's move on to page 7. And here I see the macros, macro 1, 2, 3, and 4, and what they're assigned to. Typically these macros are all at the end. They're either, they either start on page 6 or 7 and go through page 8 for most of the presets that I've looked at anyway. We can see here that macro 1 is assigned to FM scaling, but what is that? Actually, that scales all of the FM modulation, and FM modulation tends to add harmonics. So you can kind of think of FM scaling as like a brightness control. It's kind of the equivalent of tweaking a filter cutoff, but uh, in the FM equivalent. Let's take a listen. Macro 2 is assigned to Envelope Release Scale. You'll see these kind of things a lot too, but it may not always be for release. Sometimes you'll see Envelope Attack Scale or Envelope Decay 1 Scale. What these are doing are adjusting all of the envelopes at the same time. That's pretty handy because OPEX 6 has 6 envelopes, and sometimes adjusting just one of them might not really get you what you want, or it might leave the patch sounding a little weird. So let's try this out and adjust the release scales all at once. Let's try another patch here. How about this opening brass patch? We've got decay one level scale. The decay scales tend to make things sound a bit more staccato most of the time. The next one up in here is macro 3, we've got level 4. So typically when you see a level, we're, we're going to be adjusting the level of one of the operators, and that's either going to remove a component of the sound if we turn it down, or it's going to adjust the timbre of one of the sounds a bit. This one to me sounds like it's adjusting a timbre. The next five macros are typically assigned the same way in just about every patch I've looked at. They start with effect one, and then go to effect two, three, and then global effect one and two. To find out what these are actually doing, we have to go to the different effects tabs. So for this one, we can see that effect one and two are unassigned, but effect number three is assigned to multi-tap delay. If I look into that, to find the parameter that we're actually going to be controlling with this knob, we look for the one with the ring around it. So here, this knob would be adjusting the mix. 
For the last two macros, we'll look at the global effects tab, and we see we've got a multi-chorus and a delay. So macro 7 goes with the multi-chorus, and we can see with the parameter with the ring around it is depth. We'll be adjusting the multi-chorus depth. Macro 8 adjusts delay, and we can see the parameter with the ring around it is mix. It would be adjusting the overall delay mix. Let's have a look at another preset. Let's pick something from the Plux category. How about these ethereal bells? Another place we can take a look is at the sample. We can see here that this one uses a sample called INST Choir E2LP. I can see that it is being sent to the submixes, and I can also see that its level is turned up. So I can really quickly turn this level control up and down and find out what impact this is having on the sound. So it's really easy to adjust the level of that sample overall. I could also potentially switch the sample out. Some of these have different samples that are sort of in the same category. Here's another choir I could try to change to. the sample off for now. The next place I could take a look at is the submix tab. Each of the operators is going to have one of two different roles. It's either going to be an operator that you hear in the output, or it's going to be an operator that's just affecting the timbre of another operator. We can see this really easily in the submix tab. We're looking at columns here, and I can see that operator 1 has its level sent to 100% to bus 3. Operator 2 has all of its levels at 0, so if this operator is being used, it's just being used to affect the timbres. You're not hearing it directly. Operator 3 is also being sent to bus 3 at 100%, so we're hearing it. And Operator 4 is similar to Operator 2. We're not hearing it directly. Now we know which operators we're actually hearing directly in our speaker. We can isolate them and kind of hear which part of the sound they're contributing to. So those are Operators 1 and 3 in this patch. Let's disable those individually. Now we know the different sounds the operators are making, we can really easily turn their levels up and down. So we could tell that operator one was making this kind of plucky part. If that's a little too strong for me, I can just come and turn it down a bit. By the way, if this video is helping you at all, I'd really appreciate it if you'd reach out and hit the like button. That lets me know that this video has been useful for you. Thanks for that. So we know that operators two and four here in this patch aren't really making any sound that's coming through to our speakers, but they potentially could be affecting the timbre of other operators. To figure that out, we can turn off the uh, one of the operators that we know is making a sound. So now we're only hearing operator one. Let me go ahead and turn that back up for now. And if I disable operator two, It does sound like that is impacting operator one, right? You can hear uh, a little bit more of a click sound. It makes it brighter. So if I wanted to change the impact that operator two is having on operator one, I can come back to the operators tab and I can just adjust its level a bit. Let's go back to the submix tab, bring back in operator 3, and hear how that sounds. Let's pick a different patch. 
How about something out of the synths category here? Let's take a listen to... What does Basstron sound like? So one of the other places we can take a look at is in the effects section. Quite a few of these patches have quite a few effects set up on them. Generally, FM is very receptive to having effects, and in OPEX 4, there are tons of them, so a lot of times they are used to heavily influence the sound. One thing I can do is just disable all the effects, and listen to the raw sound and see what that sounds like. And that lets me kind of pick and choose which ones I might want to have. Obviously I can pick different effects here too if I think they might sound better. One thing in particular I really wanted to point out, and especially in your main effects here, if you have something like a reverb, that's pretty easily replaceable by just putting a different track on your mixer, right? I could go back and add a reverb here pretty easily. But inside of here, I could replace this reverb, and there is a very powerful parametric EQ here that I could use to really sculpt the sound in to make it sound the way I want to. So th hopefully that gave you a few ideas to try when tweaking presets with the OpX4. I think these, these are really good starting points and oftentimes can get you to where you want to go. To quickly recap, we talked about using the eight different macros and we know now how to figure out exactly what these are controlling. We talked about looking at the sample layer and its impact there. We can adjust its level or potentially swap it out for a different sample. We talked about the submix tab and how to figure out which of these operators are you're actually hearing in your speakers and which ones are altering timbres. We looked at adjusting the mix of those, and also how to tweak the timbres a little bit too if we want to. And finally, we looked at disabling and enabling effects, picking new effects, and potentially including something like the parametric EQ to help you really sculpt your sound. Happy preset tweaking. I'll catch you next time.